Colorado's own Belco Credit Union makes it possible for you to create your dream kitchen, design a new home office, or build your backyard oasis. For a limited time, get our home equity choice line with a fixed rate less than 4% APR on an advance of $10,000 or more. With Belco, you get easy access to a line of credit with the ability to lock in up to three fixed rate advances at one time. See what's possible at Belco.org. Belco, banking for everyone. Belco is an equal housing opportunity lender. Membership eligibility required. All loans subject to approval. Advertised rates are for qualified borrowers. The opinions and suggestions expressed in the following program are solely those of the participants and are not necessarily endorsed by KRMG, Cox Media Group Incorporated, or the program sponsors. This following program is sponsored by Causeway LLC. Information in this broadcast is not intended as an investment, tax, or financial advice. Matthew Moore is not a licensed investment advisor and speaks solely from his experience and opinions. All information in this broadcast is for entertainment or educational purposes only. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and Cox Media Group Tulsa are not responsible for the success or failure of any person's investment decisions or purchases. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and Cox Media Group Tulsa makes no and expressly disclaims all representations, warranties, and guarantees with respect to this broadcast and its sponsors. Investing in any market is inherently risky and can be financially dangerous. Invest at your own risk. Gather knowledge in the world of cryptocurrency right now on 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's news and talk. Welcome to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Matthew is locally based right here in Tulsa. Questions, comments, concerns? Call 918-460-5764 or send us an open mic using the KRMG app. Now, here's Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. And good Sunday evening to you. My name is Russell Mills and this is Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore and we are live in local. Yeah, I know it's a holiday weekend, but Matt was too excited to share his news and his updates with you. And they said, let's do a live show. And I was like, absolutely. This is the show where we explore the world of cryptocurrencies. We dig for digital gold. We try to figure out how all this works. And one of the people who knows that as well as just about anybody is Matthew J. Moore. As you heard the nice man say, he's based right here in Tulsa, but I don't think he's in Tulsa today. Matt, are you hearing us? Hey, Russell, this is awesome. Happy Memorial Day, and uh, I'm so excited to do a show uh, this weekend. I'm actually uh, coming from Colorado, so i um, happy to, to be able to do this and bring this wonderful information because a lot of us have questions about cryptocurrency and what the future looks like, and a lot of us may actually be invested in this space. And I also like to have my co-host, Eric Cooper, who has been going on this journey with me, uh, along with all the people who've been listening. Eric, how are you doing today? Hey, Matt. I uh, wish I was in Colorado with you. I uh, It's one of my favorite places in the world. But uh, you know what? It's Memorial Day weekend. We've got uh, an opportunity to uh, share with people some of the stuff going on in our brains and then also uh, share some time with our friend Charlie Spears today. But uh, it's going good, and uh, we're, we're happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, the weather's good and the mountains are beautiful. But on today's show, uh, we are going to talk, like you said, to Charlie Spears. Uh, we brought him back onto the program to ch- talk about a few topics that actually may be on people's minds if they've been following the news cycles uh, concerning cryptocurrency and Bitcoin itself. Um, you know, Charlie Spears, he's with American BitPower, a wonderful company in the Tulsa area, uh, which they are Bitcoin miners, and they have a lot to say about Bitcoin energy consumption uh, and a lot of the stuff that's going on. I mean, is Bitcoin in trouble? Because a lot of people have been saying it has if China cracks down on the mining. Um, and I think Charlie's got some some good points and good takeaways that uh, we're going to discuss here today on the show. But is it true that Bitcoin uses dirty energy? Uh, will green energy have a part to play in all of this? And it's my opinion that it does. So what does it mean for America? What does it mean for you and I? Uh, I think a lot is going to be coming. And I think uh, talking about Bitcoin's energy consumption and how the network actually works is very critical uh, to understanding Bitcoin. Um, but before we dive into that, Eric, I know we've got a trip coming up to Miami. Yes, Bitcoin sir. 2021, right? You excited about Bitcoin 2021? Totally stoked. Totally stoked. <laughs> We're going down there for a conference in Miami um, and we got some shirts made. And uh, I'm pretty sure you saw the shirts that I sent over, huh? You know, the uh, I'm excited about it. You know, you shared the idea, but we are going to have our um, little little uh, public uh, QR code here so that folks <laughs> want to check us out and um, want to, uh, you know, be part of our show. They can uh, they can uh, send us money or even just reach out to us. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're we're definitely looking for sponsorships, so we're going to go down there, and uh, you know, this is going to be twelve thousand people of the most influential Bitcoiners uh, in the world gathering in in one place. But uh, we want we're going to be walking around with these shirts that say "Ask Me About My Bitcoin Radio Show," and hopefully, it'll start some good conversations. But a big shout out, uh, Eric, to Jessica Stubbs with Harvard. Yes, thank Bloom. you. Yes, love these shirts. And if you are in the need of making some custom T-shirts, uh, I would encourage you to go to harvardbloom.com because uh, she has sponsored these wonderful T-shirts for us. But um, but besides that, other than going to the conference and uh, some of the crazy news going on in the cryptocurrency space, I would say that uh, adoption is growing. Um, Eric, did you see that another billionaire crypto skeptic has finally flipped his position? Yes, I did. Mr. Carl, huh? Yeah, Carl Icahn. He has changed his tune on cryptocurrency and now plans to invest a possible $1.5 billion into the cryptocurrency space. And then also, m many of our listeners have probably heard of Ray Dalio. He's yes. the founder of the largest hedge fund in the world. And he made a statement recently uh, that he not only owns Bitcoin, but would much rather have Bitcoin than a bond. And that is huge. Uh, despite prices still trying to recover from the recent dip, the fundamentals, in my opinion, of the cryptocurrency space are still strong. This is a normal cycle process, and big players are making moves while people panic. So you got to do your homework. You got to slow down. Can't and, be emotional about it. And Matt, did you even see the uh, the news with Apple? Is they're actually posting and, and looking for inv uh, developers in the crypto space, and uh, they're going to hire someone to be their chief negotiator um, and, and start working with um, – Apple wallets and a way to take a cryptocurrency built into their software. Yeah, it's very unique, Eric, because the last time news like this broke was with PayPal. And then like a month or two later, PayPal literally makes Bitcoin available to all their, their customers. And it seems like to me that following this process, Apple may be joining the party. Um, but I mean, there is there is some new news about PayPal. I mean, they now plan to let customers take their cryptocurrency off their platform and into their own wallets, which is actually huge for this. So I, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. I mean, the infrastructure, I mean, what this means if Apple and PayPal are continuing to, you know, boost their position and their offerings and, and the infrastructure that's already in place with them. I mean, this is going to help mainstream adoption. It's truly taking place. And, and these companies getting involved is, is big. Uh, and you know what? In my opinion, it's the right time. Because crypto, in my opinion, is becoming a life raft for uh, the current monetary system that we're experiencing or we're currently using. I mean, because I'm not trying to be political here, Eric, but whether it's Republicans or Democrats, they all have to keep spending and borrowing due to the fundamentals of our money system. So most people don't know how it works. But, you know, when you have a system that involves a private bank and it, which has shareholders, how many federal agencies have shareholders? Most people don't know that. But they're making interest off creating and loaning currency to the government out of thin air and then distributing it first to the big players at the top. So some people may consider that socialism for the elite. Um, but the thing that people need to consider is that the purchasing power of this currency, you know, those who are closest to the money printers often get the, the benefits of that, of that purchasing power, whether it's bailouts uh, or, or things like it. By the time it trickles down to us, the average Joe, inflation really kicks in, and mm -hmm. eventually those dollars no longer purchase the same amount of goods. Uh, it's an invisible wealth transfer, and and it's such a slow process that many of us we just we just don't realize it's going on, you know. Um, and those you know those who are closest, like I said, they get the benefits. And yeah, and it sounds know? like it's one big reason for the income inequality. Uh, these big guys accumulate. Um, assets with cheap money, and then the prices go up, and the little guy is going to be put to the disadvantage. And so, um, you know, this is a time for uh, everybody to pay attention. You know, this is your Yahoo, this is your Amazon, uh, this is a, one of those deals that uh, you're going to look back and go, oh, I wish I would not have waited so long. Yeah, you know, and it's like with all the problems that our system faces, that each one of us face, um, or even what we experienced during COVID. I mean, the 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 money handouts have are, are nice, and most people would assume, you know, like, hey, if we give money to the little guy first, you know, that that'll help everything. But essentially, what that does is, you know, it creates the the it, 
I guess, boosts, I guess, increases the speed or the velocity of money, which actually creates the inevitable even faster, which is, which is inflation and hyperinflation. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I don't know. What do you think, Eric? Yeah. So, you know, when U.S. Secretary, uh, Secretary Janet Yellen comes out and says things like we need large amounts of fiscal policy to resolve wealth and inequality, uh, that's code for increased government borrowing and income dis- uh, distribution. Keep uh, keep pumping more stimulus. Um, now, you know, let's – she's not saying let's just, you know, change the fun- fundamentals of our monetary system so, uh, you know, so it's fair. Well, you know, I, I think I think the thing that we need to consider is, you know, it, it, when you think about money, Eric, you know, it's it's only fair when the people who create it have to put in the same amount of energy, time and labor to create it, just like the people who actually work for it. So um, and, you know, that's a huge topic and, and there's so many facets to it. You know, we could continue to, to dive into that. But I think the most important thing is, is energy is important because our money represents our time, labor and energy. And and when we come back and we, we talk about, you know, what energy is and what money is and what that means for Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin consumes a lot of energy and Bitcoin is being mined from Bitcoin miners. So bringing Charlie Spears on uh, to talk about this, you know, Bitcoin's not like the dollar. You can't just simply push buttons to create new digits. Um, you know, you, you, you literally have to use a lot of resources and a lot of time. So yeah, energy is extremely important. But when we come back, we'll talk more about that. We'll bring Charlie Spears into the conversation. And we'll talk about, you know, why is energy important? How does that work? Because if you're if you're just tuning in, if this show is new to you, this is where we really dig in and try to make all this stuff make sense, even to people like me who are definitely not in their wheelhouse when we're talking about this stuff. But I do get this part. Bitcoin gets part of its value from the massive amounts of energy that is used to solve the equations that make Bitcoin work, okay? How they're doing that and how that's special here in Oklahoma, well, that's why you need to stick around through the break and hear what Charlie has to say. You're listening to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. We are live and local in the big city of Tulsa. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. My name is Russell Mills. Uh, We are talking about Bitcoin specifically today. And uh, we've got a special guest here to join us, talk a little bit about the mining situation. Eric Cooper, of course, our co-host is here, but let's start with Matthew J. Moore, who is sunning himself on the slopes of the Colorado Rockies this afternoon. That's my understanding. Matt? Hey, Russell. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm enjoying the weather. The view is beautiful, but uh, there's no better place than being with you guys and having a conversation about cryptocurrencies. So I'm super pumped to be here. Uh, last segment, uh, If you, for those who were listening or for those who maybe missed this last segment, um, you know, talking a lot. And uh, we, we were bringing on Charlie Spears from American BitPower. Uh, to talk a little bit about the mining process. But Eric Cooper, he's our co-host, and he's in studio with you guys. Um, Eric, can you tell people, if they missed a previous episode, where would they go to listen to our episodes? So you can go on krmg.com. That's K-R-M-G for the uh, – the, the, pardon the, uh, the slur at the beginning there – is you go through the on-demand, and uh, you can go back and listen to previous episodes – and uh, once again, you can do that uh, on your phone. You can uh, do it from the app. So uh, you can also check us out in those ways if you're listening in terrestrial radio right now. So, Yeah, and you know what? And if you are interested in uh, diving more into the topic that we were talking about at the first part of the show, you can always go to my website, mattjmore.com. You can reach out to me personally. You can buy my, my book, Foundations for Liberty. I talk a lot about the monetary system, which plays a big part in this narrative for Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is going to play a uh, huge role in the future. So uh, Bitcoin 2021 conference is coming up and me and Eric, we're going to be going down there and uh, we got some awesome shirts uh, that are going to basically prompt people to ask us about our Bitcoin radio show because we are looking for sponsors uh, for people who want to basically evangelize this technology and what it means for our future. But big shout out to Jessica Stubbs with Harvard Bloom. And you can check out her stuff at harvardbloom.com if you have the need to print some T-shirts. Uh, so anyways, the, the, what we were talking about this last segment, you know, we were talking about money. You know, how is money fair? 
is, you know, is money, is the process of money creation fair? And does that apply to Bitcoin? You know, the people who create money, in my opinion, must also spend large amounts of time, labor, and energy to produce it, just like all of us who work for it on a day-to-day -day base, on a day-to-day -day basis. But, but if you didn't know already, Bitcoin is not only hard money in the fact that it is limited in supply, but it also requires large amounts of energy, hardware, and resources to create it into existence. And that's so, why we bring in Charlie Spears from American BitPower today and uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about Bitcoin mining and some of the recent developments. So, Matthew, from your walkabout in Colorado, we want to say, uh, Charlie, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you checked out earlier episodes, Charlie's been on with us before. Hey, guys. It is so good to be back. I love being on this show. And I'm really excited to, to join you at Bitcoin 2021. That's a who's who of Bitcoin. Holy smokes, I'm excited. Yeah, it was like 15,000 people, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 12, 50, I had to lose track. After, over 10, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but it's got everybody. It's, it's got Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, the yep. skateboarder, is a Bitcoiner. And he's going to be there doing kickflips. It's, it's, yep. uh, Matt, are you going to do kickflips? You used to have a little skater day, right? Oh yeah, no, I might buy I might buy a skateboard while I'm down there. I might show <laughs> Tony Hawk a couple of my moves. <laughs> well, uh, Charlie, tell us a little bit about um, yourself, American Bit Power, what you do. Yeah, I'm a longtime Tulsan, and my current scheme is I'm strategy for a company called American Bit Power. We mine Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. We also do a little bit of rendering, um, but we are focused specifically on finding cheap energy, stranded energy, or stranded natural gas, and hooking it up to Bitcoin mining. So we're perfectly uh, placed here in Oklahoma to take advantage of that. Now, how about this? Give a you know brief description. How's Bitcoin mining work uh, so that if you are just getting into this, you can kind of understand a little bit better? Yeah. Well, it can be difficult to explain. You are basically using a lot of energy to process a lot of computing power, which effectively embeds the transactions in Bitcoin into the blockchain. And so I like to say that Bitcoin is backed by energy and cryptographic computation. And so miners are a part of the process. It's really more an industrial process, kind of like um, mining for gold. You are actually, in a way, um, leveraging real-world assets to produce a scarce asset. This asset just happens to be digital. Yeah, it's like uh, mathematics, you know, so much of it is, is math and, and people don't realize that. And, uh, you know, you can trust math. Um, but, you know, honestly, Charlie, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin mining, when it comes to the energy consumption and the miners and the network itself, there's a lot of talk recently. And it seems like it's pretty cyclical about China and Bitcoin miners in China. Um, so, you know, whether, you know, this is real fear. Well, you know, it, it seems to be on a regular basis. And, you know, I've seen this multiple bull and bear market cycles. And so it kind of, to me, it kind of gets old. But, you know, maybe there's something to the news this time. And maybe you can, you know, share that with us. But recently, the fear and uncertainty, which most people will call it FUD. So if you're in this space and you hear the term FUD, it basically means that it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, but the, 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 the fear and the statements that we've been hearing in Twitter or any other avenues when it comes to Bitcoin news is, hey, you know what? The Chinese mine so too much Bitcoin, and they control too much of the miners. So sell your Bitcoin. Um, and the other one is stop mining Bitcoin. So sell your Bitcoin. And then, well, you can't buy Bitcoin in China now, so you better sell your Bitcoin. So it just, I mean, it's over and over. And now it's Bitcoin miners are no longer allowed to operate in China and moving to North America. So guess what? Better sell your Bitcoin. You know, to me, it's a it's a bunch of nonsense. But I, what what are your thoughts on this, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, this, yeah. This could we be hear good this. news for yeah. us. Matt, you and I, we've been in the States for a long time. This is a tale as old as time. Going back to 2011, it seems like a biannual event that news comes out from China that they're clamping down in it or something. Um, my personal take is this news might be a bit more material. It does come from a more uh, Chinese state level. But again, we'll have to, it'll, we'll, it remains to be seen what actually happens. As it is... Bitcoin exchanges in China are still operating. Bitcoin miners in China are still discovering blocks. So nothing has really changed. I have seen in my world that um, whether or not there is teeth to this, Chinese miners are actually actively looking outside of China now to expand their operations. So uh, depending on what actually, uh, what, how serious it actually is, 
This is actually great because it increases the decentralization of hash rate. Hash rate being what we used to refer to in, uh, as, as mining. So it increases the de decentralization of the network as a whole. And what I'm seeing is a lot of this hash rate is coming to America. And a lot of it's coming to Oklahoma and Texas of all places. So why do we why do we care about this? Why does America, Oklahoma, et cetera? Why does somebody who has no dog in this race care? Mm -hmm. See, you think you don't have a dog, but I would say in the same way that we consider energy independence in America and um, basic uh, uh, domestic industrial practices as core to national security, I think we should view Bitcoin mining as similar to that. And if you look at it just from a plain balance, uh, profit perspective, this is one of the fastest growing industries. It is $20 billion of revenue a month or a, a year right now, and it could be 40 or 50 next year. This is an incredibly profitable thing to do. And, yeah. if, well, and, and if we don't do it, somebody else will. Somebody <laughs> else will. We wanted Tesla for this reason, right? Yeah. This is why, this is why uh, Bitcoin works. It's because if China doesn't do it, someone else will. If North mm -hmm. America doesn't do it, someone else will. Yeah. Someone is always yeah. going to be mining the Bitcoin. Uh, it's just a question of who. I think it should be us. Quick thought, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, th there's there's so much around this topic. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about national security and what that really means, you know, for America and Bitcoin, because there's there's a process with our money and China that most people are unaware of. And I think Bitcoin, if it becomes a de facto reserve currency for the world, America needs to pay attention and we need to position ourselves better for this. So if those miners do come to America, that's actually really good for us if we are in this new transition of a new monetary system. All right, we do have to take a quick time out. It is news time on KRMG coming up to 5.30 p.m. Uh, but we'll be right back with more of cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more, see see what Matt looks like, hey, go, go check out his website, mattjmoore with two O's dot com. We'll be right back. Okay, we got you all caught up on the news. Now let's see if we can get you caught up on what's going on in the world of cryptocurrency. This is Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. My name is Russell Mills. Thanks for tuning in. We are live and local in the big city of Tulsa on this holiday weekend. Lots of stuff going on in Tulsa. Uh, you know, celebration, commemoration, calls for reparations, quite a bit going on. But Matthew J. Moore, he's got his, his stuff going, and he's actually in Colorado this weekend, but could not not join us for this show. Matt, how's it going out there? Oh, it's doing wonderful, Russell. Thanks so much. It's uh, exciting. It's always exciting to talk about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And you know what? If uh, if you were listening to the last segment or maybe you missed the last segment, um, you know, we were talking about this concept about Bitcoin mining, what it means for, for energy, what it means for America and national security. Uh, there's a lot that's wrapped into this and there's a lot to digest, especially in how Bitcoin mining works. But if we are truly going through a transition uh, of the monetary system and Bitcoin is going to play a part in that, um, you know, that's that's a topic that we need to be concerned about. We need to study. We need to learn. And that's why I love doing this show with my co-host, Eric Cooper. Eric, why don't you say hello? Hello to everybody. And we're going to say uh, happy Memorial Day weekend. Yes, happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, great time to celebrate. I don't know what the weather's like in Oklahoma there, but uh, here in Colorado, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but on today's show, uh, we were recently talking to uh, Charlie Spears, who's with American BitPower. He's our guest today. Um, and you know, he brought up some really good points about uh, Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin mining possibly moving from China, because there's been a lot of concern about China. But if China's cracked down Israel on Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin exchanges, it could be very beneficial for America. And what I was going to say in the last segment about national security is there, there are actual individuals in the American government. Um, and it's also my opinion that, um, you know, people have this opinion that America would be way better off having Bitcoin as a de facto world reserve currency. And I know that sounds really crazy, but, you know, hear, hear my reasoning here, okay? We have a system in which we create dollars, which are borrowed out of thin air from a central bank, okay? Which, if you go on the Federal Reserve's website, you'll see that the central bank has shareholders, and they earn interest off this funny money, okay? And this is a monopoly, 
and is America's number one export simply because we are the world reserve currency. And China knows this. They know that the average lifespan of a world reserve currency is 80 to 90 years. And we are 76 years yeah. into this experiment. I mean, this, this, you know, we are going to see a transition in our lifetime, in my opinion, to a new world reserve currency or to some kind of new system or reset, even the IMF, the World Economic Forum. They're talking about a great reset. Um, but literally, over the last decade, China has been stacking precious metals and hard assets like it's going out of style. And uh, I think they're doing it on purpose. They know this game comes to an end. And whoever holds the most hard assets limited in supply becomes king. So it's like that old saying, whoever holds the gold makes the rules. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> in, in my opinion, if we are in a transition... And this is the death of the dollar empire. Um, China currently has been borrowing these dollars because we export these dollars. We, we create dollars and, and countries are required to use them for international trade. But they basically lend out dollars at a spread around the world to developing countries, knowing that these countries, literally, these countries are going to have a hard time paying back these loans. Uh, so guess what China does? They strike a deal. By having these dollars, uh, these loans secured with hard asset collateral. So when these developing countries essentially default due to the dollar sometimes strengthening in the currency markets, which does happen compared to other fiat currencies, basically China gets these hard assets and takes them back to their country when these defaults happen uh, because they've made this deal. And guess who protects the trade routes as China takes those assets back to their country? The American military. Yes. So – it's uh, it's really interesting. And on top of that, when this system is in trouble, when the monetary system is in trouble and there's a need for dollars, it's all instantly backstopped by more Fed money printing. So I don't know. I mean, to me, how is all this? How is this scenario really in our our best interest? And, you know, I, I'm glad we have Charlie here because he's going to talk about the importance of having Bitcoin miners coming to to America but um, Eric, I know yeah. we, we were talking recently about Elon Musk. Um, did you have a question for Charlie about? I mean, the yeah, I, I do. I do. You know, we were all talking about this, and Elon comes on. He says, you know, obviously, uh, Bitcoin miners and their their dependency on fossil fuels is why he has made uh, his most recent loud decisions statement. Charlie, yeah. What do you What do you think about this? I, and what, don't I mean, tell me that Elon bought one point five billion dollars of Bitcoin without some basic due diligence. Yeah. I don't know. I I think if he actually thinks that, then he should really uh, be more thoughtful about his decisions and his messaging because that's kind of Bitcoin one hundred and one. Additionally, if you look at uh, energy use of Bitcoin by type of energy use, it's the greenest large scale industrial practice. If you look at the energy makeup of uh, how the United States and China produce their energy, you find uh, significantly lower renewables, renewables penetration in that energy makeup compared to Bitcoin. Uh, you can pull the data from Cambridge themselves. They study. They have a wonderful resource on it. Google Cambridge Bitcoin Energy. And you can get all the data. And you'll, it'll actually demonstrate that Bitcoin is one of the greenest large-scale industrial practices and because of the way and the energy demanding nature of bitcoin mining it seeks out naturally the cheapest forms of energy where are the cheapest forms of energy they are in stranded or underutilized assets if you are one of the problems with renewables is in the load variable load and energy transfer and storage if you can respond profitably to those problems anywhere in the world there is a very compelling case to uh, that bitcoin may be a massive driver of renewables development. Uh, so um, my company, we are focused on reducing the wasted natural gas, which has an environmental component uh, and uh, ESG narrative to it. And I think there's a lot of companies like ours. What's I'm sorry, what's ESG? Environmental sustainability and governance. It's which kinda, is, yeah. okay, so this is something, and I, I'm going to jump in for a second because I will tell you, I talk to a lot of corporate people, and I talk to a lot of people in the oil industry and the automakers and everything, and they're telling me that there's several reasons why we're going towards renewable energy, most of which are economic and security related. It has nothing to do with oil is bad, wind is good. It has to do with generation is actually less expensive. They're solving these problems about transmission. And that is going to mean there's going to be a, a market for what, like what you're talking about, these little natural gas places and spots. 
where if our energy system was less centralized and more decentralized, it would also be more secure. Yeah, my family, uh, the greater Charlie Spears family, has been in the oil and gas consulting business for 50 or 60 years. This is deep in my blood, yet all of us do advocate for a variety of energy sources and a dynamic energy grid. So we strongly advocate for investments in renewables, but also in the resources we have which get the job done. Fossil fuels keep the lights on in many places. And then then to pull it back to Bitcoin, we continually talk about Bitcoin and its energy integration. One of of the things I envision is, and one of the most hopeful uh, narratives to Bitcoin, is that it may allow and propel an entire reimagining of the energy production and consumption uh, stack in the entire world. Imagine you've got these third world countries who have significant energy problems. If you if they if they have a an incentive mechanism through Bitcoin mining to profitably develop large scale capital projects to propel the 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 economic the the economy in those countries, um, it's one of the most uh, humanitarian uh, initiatives uh, I can think of. In fact, the Human Rights uh, Foundation themselves are extremely loud advocates for Bitcoin for this very reason. So in other words, yeah. it gives less developed countries a chance to to basically create a new industry infrastructure and benefit both economically and from that in, that from, energy uh, development from standpoint. a backing that needs them to succeed also. So you know, other yeah. miners they they need it to happen. It, it's many birds with one stone because if you think about it, uh, if you think about the geopolitical situation right now, and we talk about the geopolitical component of money and the petrodollar system, if uh, Bitcoin is a neutral money. It has no state which advocates or issues it. Um, how much American resources and American blood, sweat, and tears has been spent um, securing American economic interests overseas? If we do not need to protect the petrodollar um, because we cannot control the money, um, that removes one more surface layer for us to have to go to war. And right. so I think Bitcoin as a driver of peace by reducing the amount of incentives. That's really interesting. Yeah, I could go down it that is, road, but yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's so true. Yeah, that's a big rabbit hole. <laughs> I just find it funny that people, you know, people just they they don't they don't care when energy is being used to do something helpful and useful for humanity. You know, nobody talks about the amount of energy that the you know say let's say the current monetary system uses or even gold mining. You know, Bitcoin is a hard money asset like gold but only for a digital age for artificial intelligence to transact with each other for us to have a digital layer one store of value money that we will build on top of with multiple layers. I mean, despite being a powerful network, I mean, you know, it's 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 it only uses half of of the energy for the gold industry and that is a huge amount of energy um so to me i just i think bitcoin is great for humanity uh charlie i mean what do you what do you what else do you see i mean for for humanity if we adopt a bitcoin standard um i think that man i could i mean it's it's a loaded question i I could take this so many different ways um I, I really do like to focus on the apolitical nature of Bitcoin. Um, one, again, one of the first things I ever said on, a, on the first show I was on here was that Bitcoin doesn't care who uses it. And this can mm-hmm. be a good or a bad thing. But ultimately, it's an inevitable thing. We, it, this is going to happen whether or not you approve of it. No state can censor these transactions. Um, but I see that one of the barriers to uh, underprivileged people around the world has been an, an, an inability to rely on their monetary system. Um, yes, we can fly in and say, oh, well, dollars work great, but uh, dollars are hard to export to the world. And, uh, and honestly, th- maybe they don't want to be uh, reliant on the dollar system. They find a neutral money uh, and a way to store their wealth and then begin constructive economic activity. And it cannot be inflated away by a despotic government. It cannot, it, it, there are significant barriers to its control um, from perhaps abusive or hostile governments. So I think um, removing those uh, systemic problems in countries around the world is one of the most optimistic things for humanity. Can I say yeah. I, I see I see a potential issue with this, though? And even in rural Oklahoma, much less, I don't know, Zimbabwe or mm-hmm. whatever, 
which is, uh, don't they have to have good, solid internet access? So and isn't that a thing? This is a great, yeah. Well, you have to have internet access. Actually, it requires very little bandwidth to use Bitcoin at Not all. Not necessarily talk about, like, yeah, high speed, but I'm no. saying they've got to. And, and I, I visited Pakistan a couple of years ago. There was like 20% of the country they couldn't reach with radio well, in 20. 20- 19. We are on the cusp of access to internet not being an issue anymore. There are currently satellites funded by yep. Bitcoiners flying around the planet, which actually process transactions. You do not even need to contact, go through your ISP. So imagine what happens when you when you remove, think of it as like cutting the cables for the internet. Now you're directly communicating with the satellite. And this is, this is something that's going to expand very rapidly. You have SpaceX or uh, whatever the uh, Elon, Daddy Elon's uh, satellites yeah. in there, but imagine—I mean, this is going to be around the world, and that will be ve- very, very—that uh, will not be a barrier going forwards. Well, look, look what happened with uh, with Africa and the developing countries. We'll talk more about that when we come back. But this has been an awesome, awesome conversation. Yeah. Yep. Um, Africa. I, I'm sure that they are thinking about all this. Everybody's thinking about it. That's the thing that one of the things that I find really interesting about this, it is truly global and this may be the first truly global form of money. Uh, right? All right. More of Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore coming up after a quick time out. You're listening to KRMG Tulsa's only news and talk. And that funky music means that cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore is back on the air here on 1023 KRMG Tulsa's News and Talk. My name is Russell Mills. Uh, we've got about another no, a few minutes here before we get to the news at the top of the hour. And so I want to send it right back out to Matt because uh, you were going to you were going to talk about Africa a little bit. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about obviously Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and the possible global impact of all that on all the f- fiat financial systems that currently exist. And you wanted to uh, make a point about Africa. Our host, Matthew J. Moore. Thank you so much, Russell. Yeah, this conversation today has been awesome. We've been talking about Bitcoin energy consumption, Bitcoin mining, what does it mean for America? Uh, and, you know, what does it mean for developing countries, uh, you know, and internet access, you know, because if this is a new monetary system that's evolving, you know, internet is going to play an important role in, it, in this. But I just find it fascinating when you look at these developing countries in Africa, a lot of these countries totally skipped the whole landline thing. They went, they had these mobile phones, they're, they're, you know, using cell phone minutes for for a type of currency with each other so the the access to smartphones the access to internet is is growing and the technology for for bitcoin and the use case of bitcoin will continue to improve Uh, you know a lot of people will talk about you know bitcoin's uh transaction scaling nature um but you know what there's there's so many things that can be done that can be built on top of bitcoin's store of uh, or layer one store of value money proposition is essentially what bitcoin is you know it's like for me it would be complaining in the 90s that my modem wasn't uh, good enough to stream netflix you know <laughs> like <laughs> you know technology evolves technology grows we build yeah. on top of networks but we definitely need a store of value uh for this new digital ecosystem uh that that's being built um but you know what um i've got charlie Spears here. I got uh, Eric Cooper. He's my co-host. Eric, why don't you say hello? Hello. And once again, if you guys want to check in to past episodes, go on krmg.com, the on-demand section. You guys can find uh, episodes uh, from the early days, way back when. And Charlie Spears is here from America Bit Power. And Charlie, um, you know, just want to say welcome back in. And what you know, what kind of confidence do you think that uh, you can give the people for the uh, future of Bitcoin mining? We, we've talked about a lot here. Yeah. Well, uh, as long as there is Bitcoin, there will be a it will be mined. So, I, you know, you can make that statement. And Bitcoin is designed to be around for hundreds of years. Um, I think that maybe the term mining is a bit disingenuous, like we're not actually going and, you know, digging up anything. It's more it's just a, it's a general catch all reference for the industrial practice of securing the network. So it's going to be around a long time. And I think it's going to be around here uh, locally. I mean, the governor of Texas, Abbott. Uh, last month tweeted, quote, Texas is a mecca for Bitcoin miners, and we are seeing a gold rush, a an orange rush, if you will, down to Texas right now from miners all across the world. You wouldn't believe some of the deals I am seeing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and you know, I was I want to bring this up before before we you know end the show today. But I, the the Bitcoin Mining Council that's been a big topic. You know, with uh, Elon Musk meeting with Michael Saylor uh, as a Bitcoin miner, Charlie. What are your thoughts about this this council? Is it a is it a, a centralization process? Should we be scared? You know, what are, what are your thoughts? So this council is the result of e, of uh, Elon Musk's consideration of the uh, uh, you know uh, Bitcoin's energy problem. As he as he puts it, um, and it was it took a lot of the larger largest Bitcoin miners in North America, put them in a room, and said, "Let's uh, talk about this. Let's talk about how we can uh, demonstrate uh, that we are renewables or sustainably focused." My initial takes were kind of negative. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was actually like, "Oh man, I the 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 more decisions that are made behind closed doors, the worse." Yeah. Um, I've since kind of backed off on that perspective, um, but. Uh, I, I because it, it it they seem to be more transparency driven than I initially thought. Um, it remains to be seen. I just I will say this. I don't really think Elon should be in charge of this because I don't really think he understands what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. Stick to making EVs and shooting rockets in space because that's cool. Uh, and yeah. you know that I don't tell you how to shoot a rocket into space. So, Charlie, do I mean do you think we should be worried about the energy consumption or? Wow. I many times I said I'm very optimistic. Uh, I think we should be, I think we should be worried about restricting uh, healthy energy consumption by Bitcoin miners too much. I think um, I'm not I'm not fundamentally always against regulation, but I think we we are at a very important kind of uh, tipping point where if the narrative gets out of hand, we could restrict it so much so that Bitcoin is mined only in Kazakhstan off of you know crude and and coal. Yeah, well, and you know, it's like uh, had America not taken the position that they did with the internet in the early days, you know, the the internet influence and powerhouse maybe in other parts of the world. So you know, they they definitely took a more hands off approach at the beginning. But uh, with all of this going on, Charlie, you know, and, and the, the the price dip recently, I know I'm buying the dip. I know you're yeah. probably buying the buy dip. Buy the dip, baby. I said <laughs> I'd say it. I'm gonna say it again. Buy the dip. <laughs> when in, when in Bitcoin's history have you not wanted to buy the dip? Yes, oh, it's a time never. capsule. I keep on saying yeah. it. Yeah. No, for me, I've always wanted to, you know, get a cheaper Bitcoin. But you know, so I take it that you're still bullish on the market overall, and that we're still in a bull market. Yeah, again, I'm taking off the company hat and putting the "this is just Charlie talking" hat because I've been in this game for a, a very long time. This ain't my first rodeo, and uh, I'm still on the bull, you could say. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people uh, may see this and they say, if, uh, "See a 50% drop in a relatively short amount of time," and there's a lot of new people and. Uh, they are not used to this. This is standard behavior. This is mm -hmm. the volatile adoption yep. of an entirely new asset class that could be that is that could be hundred trillion dollars in value someday, and that doesn't get there like smoothly. So, um, my personal view is uh, this maps very well onto previous cycles in Bitcoin where we have seen a fifty percent dip at roughly similar price levels. Again, I, I'm not necessarily a chartist, but I do stare at these things all day, and mm -hmm. this is very familiar to me. Yep. Yeah, and the timing, the timing for the dip is eerily similar to the rhyme and rhythms that we've seen in the past, too. So I, uh, I've i had to talk a couple people off of a ledge uh, to make sure that they didn't sell sell at a loss. Oh, I, well, um, if you succeeded, good job, man. That is that is one of the hardest things. It, it Sometimes people need to see other people not selling in order to have the confidence. I mean, in 2017, a lot of people, I think, were shaken out. But uh, I I think now something's changed. It helps when the macroeconomic uh, direction is now in your favor. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Oh, yeah, and people are are actually talking about that. I mean, even you know these global governmental entities are talking about it. So they're talking about these monetary cycles. So it is it is fascinating to watch and be alive because I think we are alive during one of the most pivotal and I don't know I I, it, I wouldn't want to be alive any other time. I mean, this is exciting times, and I think Bitcoin is going to mean a lot of things for every single one of us. So. Yeah, I'm yeah. also super excited. If you live in Tulsa, I gotta, I've got to shout out to the Tulsa Bitcoin Meetup events. We have a little group on Facebook, Tulsa Bitcoin Meetup. Um, we want to uh, incentivize people meeting in person to talk about Bitcoin. That's the best way to learn about it. Well, where can where can people find you, Charlie? Um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at CB Spears. If you want to talk to me directly, you can go to letstalkbitcoin.guide, uh, or you can uh, go through my company, American Bitpower, uh, AmericanBitPower.com. 
Yep, and we are going to be down in Miami next week representing the Tulsa area in the Bitcoin space at the Bitcoin 2021 conference. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, we got a whole uh, Tulsa cohort going. You guys are going to have so much fun, and I'm going to be stuck here covering, <laughs> I don't know, probably a tornado or a crime scene. That's okay. I, uh, I'll, I'll, you guys can bring me a cookie or, or one of those shirts. Do yes. that. I'll do it. Hey, do uh, it. again, folks, uh, we, we put all this stuff online for you. Uh, go to krmg.com or use the KRMG app and uh, hit the on-demand section. There you will find the podcast of every episode of Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Thank you for tuning in, spending part of your Sunday with us. I'm Russell Mills. We'll see you here next week on 1023 KRMG. Now serving F27 at DMV window number 16. Okay, Rose, we're second in line. Perfect, Rose. You remembered the birth certificate? Yes, and we have our electric bill. Excellent. We'll be Real ID ready in no time. Real ID ready to visit our grandson Ricky at Fort Bragg, then fly to New Orleans for Jazz Fest. Pardon me, are you talking to yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I am. Talk yourself into Real ID readiness by May 3rd, 2023. Make a plan at dhs.gov slash Real ID.